Welcome to Today in Pro Wrestling History, February 22. On this date, Murcielago Velázquez was born. Jesús Velázquez Quintero, February 22, 1910 to May 26, 1972, better known under the ring names El Murcielago Enmascarado and Murcielago Velázquez, was a Mexican luchador or professional wrestler. Velázquez was the fourth wrestler in Mexico to wear a wrestling mask and the second Mexican to work as an enmascarado or masked wrestler in the history of Lucha Libre. He became the first wrestler in Mexico to be forced to unmask, losing a Lucha de Apuestas or bet match to Octavio Gaona, creating the most prestigious match type in Lucha Libre. He once held the Mexican National Middleweight Championship and after his retirement was the head of the Mexico City Boxing and Wrestling Commission for a while. Near the end of his in-ring career, Velázquez began acting in various Mexican films, including several luchador films, working both with El Santo and Blue Demon. He also became involved in the creative aspects of movie making, writing several screenplays and stories over the years. The last movie he wrote the story for, La Mujer del Diablo, opened two years after his death. Jesus Velázquez made his professional wrestling debut on April 3, 1938 in the original Arena Mexico, working for Impresa Mexicana de Lucha Libre EMLL. Velázquez was one of the first native Mexicans to really play up the show aspects of Lucha Libre, wearing a black leather vest with a hood as he would stalk towards the ring and wrestle in black trunks and masks. His entrance theatrix would at times include him hiding a couple of live bats under his vest, releasing them in the arena during his in-ring introduction, letting them fly free among the audience. His rough, brutal in-ring wrestling style added to the aura of El Murcielago Enmascarado, quickly pushing him up the rankings as he was wrestler that drew fans by the fact that they wanted to see him lose. Within a few months of his debut he was wrestling against some of the top names in EMLL such as Bobby Vinales and Dientes Hernandez. One of the defining moments of Velázquez's early career was his storyline feud with Merced Gómez that began only a few weeks after his debut. During a match against Gómez a kick from Velázquez hit Gómez in the face, knocking him down. Moments later the crowd was shocked to discover that Gómez, I was missing, supposedly from the brutal kick from Velázquez. Gomez had actually lost the eye due to boxing several years prior and had a glass eye that he popped out after the kick to give the impression that Velasquez caused him to lose an eye. Some Lucha magazines tried to claim that it was Gomez, good eye, that had been injured in the match, trying to keep the illusion that it was a legitimate injury, but the fact that Gomez would continue to wrestle for years underscored the fact that this was indeed a storyline. The storyline had its desired effect, portraying El Murcielago Enmascarado as a heartless villain or Rudo. In 1939, Velázquez participated in a tournament for the vacant Mexican National Middleweight Championship where he defeated the likes of Jack O'Brien and Cyclone Velos but lost to eventual tournament winner Dientes Hernandez. During the early parts of his career Velázquez also worked as a policeman, both to make money but also to gain access to the Casino de la Policia training facilities to further his physical abilities in the ring. In 1940, EMLL began a storyline between El Murcielago Enmascarado and Octavio Gaona that would lead to one of the pivotal moments of the early years of Lucha Libre. In the United States masked wrestlers were commonplace and there had been matches where a masked wrestler was forced to unmask as far back as 1926 where Jim Londos defeated the masked Marvel and he was forced to reveal himself to be Ray Steele. The storyline played out in a way that the brutal Rudo Murcielago drew the normally more technical Gaona into a series of brawls, matches that often ended inconclusively. After a particularly violent match Gaona challenged Murcielago to put his mask on the line in a match. With El Murcielago being lighter than Gaona he demanded that Gaona put his hair on the line as well. With the challenge, the Lucha de Apuestas or, bet match, was created. In the build-up to the high-profile match El Murcielago Enmascarado faced and defeated a number of other wrestlers in Luchas de Apuestas matches leaving Merced Gomez, Bobby Vinales, Dientes Hernandez and Cyclone Velos bald as a result as they built to the match with Gaona. On July 14, 1940, Gaona defeated El Murcielago Enmascarado, forcing him to unmask after the match and reveal his birth name, something that became a Lucha Libre tradition. Since then Apuesta matches have become the highest profile match in Mexico, winning the mask of an opponent is considered a higher achievement than winning a championship match. After being unmasked he modified his ring name to Murcielago Velasquez and continued to be a hated Rudo wrestler as his natural charisma was even more obvious without the mask. In 1942, Velázquez would gain a measure of revenge on Octavio Gaona when he defeated Gaona in the finals of a tournament for the vacant Mexican National Middleweight Championship. In the late 1930s, a young wrestler, Rodolfo Guzman, began working as El Murcielago II in and around Mexico City, but Velázquez complained to the Mexico City Boxing and Wrestling Commission that the name was too close to his own ring name and that Velázquez had not given permission for the use. 
The commission ruled that Velazquez had the rights to the name, forcing Guzman to choose a different name. Guzman adopted a new ring character, El Santo, and in subsequent years became one of the most popular wrestlers in Mexico. EMLL paired the two up for a long-running feud that saw the masked El Santo defeat Velázquez in a Luchas de Acuestas match in January 1943, leaving Velázquez bald as a result. Two months later, on March 19, 1943, El Santo won the Mexican National Middleweight Championship from Velázquez as well. By the end of the year, other Mexican wrestlers, such as El Santo rose to the top, relegating Murcielago Velázquez to the lower ranks, working shows all over Mexico but not making as many headlines as his heyday from 1937 through 1942. In 1955, he experienced a career resurgence, teaming with Samar Salim, forming a tag team that quickly gained a reputation for disregarding the rules and engaging in out-of-control brawls with their opponents. The team received a push from the promoters as they were given victories over Cavernario Galindo and El Verdungo, another team known for their wild wrestling style, as well as, tough, Tony Bourne and Tony Barbetta, El Santo and Pancho Valentino, Los Hermano Shadow, the Shadow Brothers, Black Shadow and Blue Panther and the team of Tarzan Lopez and Enrique Yanis. One particular match, against Lopez and Henry Pilaso, got so out of hand and bloody that the Mexico City Wrestling and Boxing Commissioner Manuel Munoz decided to ban both Velazquez and Salim from wrestling in Mexico City for life. The ban ended the team of Velazquez and Salim as Velazquez left professional wrestling a short time later to become an actor. While he retired from in-ring competition in 1955, he never truly left Lucha Libre. Over the years, he trained wrestlers such as Dick Angelo, Philly Espinoza and Humberto Garza. He also worked in several luchador films in his acting career. In the early 1960s he was the Distrito Federal Boxing and Wrestling Commissioner, going from being a hated rule breaker to the highest authority. In 1957, Velazquez had a small, uncredited role in a Mexican movie called Ladrone de Cadavers, The Body Snatcher. He made his first credited on-screen appearance in La Mamia Azteca, where he played a villain known as El Murcielago and being billed as, Murcielago, Velázquez, taking his ring name onto the silver screen. Over the next 10 years, Velázquez had roles in a number of different films, including luchador films starring El Santo and Blue Demon. During this time period, he also began writing screenplays and stories, the first being Triunfa La Pandilla, The Triumphant Gang, that premiered in 1963. Among his other credits were El Mundo de los Vampiros, The World of Vampires, Tlayucan and Santo contra los Jeanettes del Terror, Santo vs. The Riders of Terror. The final movie he wrote the story for, La Mujer del Diablo, The Devil Woman, opened in 1974, a year after Velázquez, death. While Velázquez, in ring character was brutal and bloodthirsty, the man behind the character was the complete opposite, something not revealed publicly until years after his death. His wrestling peers described him as very friendly and well-read. Velázquez stayed active, writing movie scripts and various stories until his death on May 27, 1972. The autopsy revealed that Velázquez died from cirrhosis of the liver which led to a heart attack. Championships and accomplishments included the Impresa Mexicana de Lucha Libre, Mexican National Middleweight Championship, one time. And that concluded our coverage of Murcielago Velázquez. See you next time.